Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to take you very quickly through the practical portion of the course, kind of beginning to end, just to give you some idea of what to expect step by step as we type in CLI commands, paste in configuration files. Uh, there's no theoretical explanation in this video and no kind of educational practice aspect. This is purely the functional project for the hands-on course beginning to end as it stands right now in 2018. The most up-to-date instructions are found as resources on each page. There are links to GitHub, uh, which is always kept up to date. Here it is, just kind of working straight through the project from a naked cloud VM, just a server that's freshly provisioned somewhere in the cloud, bringing that all the way up to a fully configured WordPress server with the WordPress application and all of its dependencies installed. Um, and everything managed through Nginx, MySQL, etc., PHP, FPM. So here goes. Okay, so here's the README for the GitHub repository for this project, for this course. Um, this has been kept up to date with, you know, changing versions of Ubuntu, uh, slight changes in software versions, etc. Uh, I'm going to run you through this process on uh, the latest long-term support version of Ubuntu, which is 18.04. The way this is structured is pretty simple. The first file just goes with the command line basics video. Two through six go with the kind of platform or host setup where you kind of configure the server that you're using to have all the right, you know, base OS software configurations for your services. And then seven, can be repeated as many times as you want. That's where you're actually setting up a website. You can do it once and then you'll have one website on your server. You can do it 15 times and you'll have 15 separate WordPress sites on your hosting server. Okay, all of these are actually linked to from the appropriate videos. So when you're looking for copy and paste instructions, just click on the link in the video description or the video resources. We are gonna start at two here and just open up tabs for each of these and we'll run through the entire process, soup to nuts, step by step, start to finish right now. Okay, so the first thing we need before we even install some software is a box. So let's get ourselves to a box. We're gonna provision a host here. You can do this on you know, a platform like AWS, you can do this on a hardware uh, server, you could do this, uh, you know, really wherever you want. I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 on DigitalOcean because it's a lot simpler to get started. I'm going to pick the smallest instance possible. Um, you could switch the instance size uh, if you decide to add more sites and need more resources, like 192 gigs of RAM and 32 vCPUs. If this is for production, again, you would enable backups. I'm going to pick the closest zone to myself because this is just a test server. Again, if it was production, you would pick the zone that's close, or the, sorry, a data center that's closest to your users or most of your users. Again, for production, I'd also enable monitoring. We're going to add an SSH key now. If you haven't created one yet, you would click new SSH key and then type something like SSH keygen type ECDSA. Uh, and then hit enter and it'll create a key for you. I already have a key actually at this exact location. So I'm gonna pub. I'm gonna paste in the public half of this key, uh, which this would generate again if you ran it in here and then hit uh, actually give it a name. You could name this something like tutorial Linux. Uh, really, you would want to name this for um, the host that it identifies. So this would be my like tutorial Linux VM or whatever. I actually already have this key in here. So I'm not going to add this for you. It would just add the key. And I'm going to check the, the key to make sure it's, it's pre-installed on the uh, root user on that box. I'm going to just call this WordPress one. If you're doing one host per website, you might name it for the domain that you're going to be putting on there. But WordPress one is fine. And this is the project. I'm just gonna have this in the tutorial Linux project. You'll probably only have a single project uh, for a while. So you can see this is being provisioned. DigitalOcean is really, really good and really fast with provisioning. It's actually fantastic. It's way faster than both AWS and Google Cloud, which is surprising. 
uh, I don't know what they're doing with provisioning, but I've been working with them for going on 10 years, and it's uh, it's ugly, especially AWS. Okay, so we've got a public IP here, and we can just SSH over to this. I'll clear this out, and uh, I think root is what it gives us. Uh, you'll accept the host key the first time, and then you'll be prompted to enter the password for your key, if you can remember it. Okay, so now we're logged in as root. Obviously, you'll really only want to log in as root once, and then you'll want to create an unprivileged user, um, for example, Ubuntu, or for example, a site user, uh, or just a user with your name, like I would create a Dave user, just as a, an admin user that has pseudo or rights that can become root if they need to, or run commands as root, but who is not root, to make sure that root can't just like log in, even if it's with a key. There is a video for that. I'm just not going to cover it right here. The first thing we're going to do is at get update, and that just makes sure we've got the latest list of packages. And then we can get started installing stuff. So we've just run this. I'm going to install MySQL Server, and that's our database. There used to be some configuration that went along with this, which is why it's a separate command, but it can't hurt to do it separately just in case something goes wrong, which occasionally happens. And then we'll install the rest of the stuff, which is PHP Monit for basic monitoring and PHP MySQL. Now we're going to add the Nginx PPA. Now you could install this from the default repositories, but as time wears on, um, it's going to it's going to become kind of outdated. So I like installing it from the official. Nginx PPA, you can see that it is valid for 1804, our version. And even if you're on 1604, this is a good thing to do. So we are going to use their PPA and then we'll update our packages again. Actually, I think it might have been doing that automatically, but can't hurt to do it again. Yeah, it looks like it just updated the packages. Now we're going to install Nginx, our web server. As always, hit Y and enter to continue. And that is it, that's the base system. And obviously there's more to do, but uh, that's kind of part one. This one's actually pretty simple. This is really just starting and enabling our services. So we'll go ahead and start them. Uh, there's a whole video on you know what the difference between these things is, but um, but basically starting them starts them once right now and enabling them creates uh, some symlinks that uh, ensure that they're started at boot, right? So that the next time you reboot this host, this hosting server, they'll automatically be started. Uh, that's really all there is to this. And we're on to the next one. Now we're gonna configure Nginx. So we're gonna go into Nginx's configuration directory and you can see that there's an Nginx conf. I go into this in more detail in the videos, obviously, but we're just gonna rename it to nginx conf ridge which lets us write a brand new uh, nginx conf uh, now we're going to recreate that and i'm going to paste all of this delicious stuff in here i'm using vim you can use nano or whatever you like really uh, and I'm write this out and we're going to create the cache directory that we're using to cache our website. The P gives us anything that isn't created here yet, we're going to create. So we have, we're guaranteed to have all these directories. That's it for the base Nginx config. We're moving on to PHP and PHP FPM. We need some extensions for WordPress to run. This is application specific. So if you'd want to, if you want to run a different PHP application, you would obviously like require different libraries. Uh, we'll make sure that var run php fpm exists because we're going to use that in future configuration stuff uh, again if you're using ubuntu 16.04 because of these version changes and the unnecessary resulting uh, configuration directory changes you'll you would want to change all this to 7.0 if you're using something older than 18.04 uh, which we're using so we're going to move this just like we did the nginx file we're going to move the default php fpm configuration file and then we're going to create a new one of these 
uh, using Vim, you can use Nano or whatever else you like. And this just tells PHP FPM to look where, where to look really for configuration files, so site pool files as they're called. We're gonna remove the original pool config file and then we'll recreate it. Paste this stuff in here. Um, now, your server host name .soc, I think you can get away without this file, but we're not gonna create this for now. So the default PHP FPM config is actually not gonna be like connected to anything else. Uh, it'll be listening on a socket here, but um, I haven't created an actual PHP FPM pool for it. Now we're gonna change the PHP any file and create a new one. This is the def like overarching PHP config file. Uh, there's a ton of options here. Obviously, if you're if you're running more sites or larger sites, you may want to configure some of these things here. Um, but these are defaults that are fine to start with, kind of pre-vetted for security and that kind of thing. Uh, we're gonna leave this out for now. Um, but if you were kind of like done configuring or reconfiguring, this is where you just restart the PHP FPM service. Okay, let's configure MySQL. This'll echo out a more or less random password that we can use for PHP FPM. And I'll actually just stick that here for now just so we can copy and paste it later. Little note there for you. And we can run the MySQL secure installation command. I'm gonna actually not install the password validation thing because it's annoying and uh, leads to like weird things. Just Obviously, that means you you are responsible for creating secure passwords from then on, from that moment on. Uh, we still got this, but I'm just gonna repaste our secure root password. We're definitely going to remove any anonymous users. We're definitely gonna disallow remote login because this isn't a public MySQL server that we wanna use from somewhere else. This is I shouldn't say public it, but you know, uh, MySQL server that you'll use from a bunch of other web servers. Um, this is a single use local database that we're only using from this same machine. So we can remove like remote login privileges, test tables, uh, anonymous users, allowing anonymous login, et cetera, all this madness that it ships with by default. And then we're gonna restart MySQL. Um, I actually don't think this is strictly necessary based on what we just did, but... Okay, and now we're at the kind of last part. This is actually setting up a uh, WordPress website. So we're going to add a user, um, and I'm just gonna call it Tutorial Linux, actually. Uh, you, you can use user add, like dash M, with a few extra things here, but uh, if you're doing this interactively, this is, whoops, uh, this is fine. We'll call it Tutorial Linux. And, oh my, I forgot what this wizard looks like. So this gets committed and this just writes stuff into Etsy Shadow and Etsy Password. Uh, and I think it might create, yeah, it creates a home directory too, but that's really all it touches. Now uh, we are going to create that log directory, right? So that's where our website's gonna log into. And we're gonna just say tutoriallinux.conf. And this will be our Nginx config file. And I'm just gonna do a very simple find and replace here. So we're gonna copy this entire config file. And everywhere that it says domain name in brackets, uh, almost as if we we're gonna use Ansible or something to automate this and template it out. Uh, everywhere it says that, we're gonna just replace that with tutoriallinux.com. Uh, so I'm just gonna select all these and say tutoriallinux.com. You can see this is a redirect. Uh, I think that should be good. Uh, and your username, that's right, has to get replaced with tutoriallinux. 
Um, and I think, let's check that socket file. That's right. We'll call this tutorial Linux dot sock. Okay, so that should be good. Um, so that's the socket file that it's going to talk to PHP FPM on. It's the user that it's running as, I should say the home directory that it's running in. And uh, that is about it. We can go ahead and write to this file. Okay, so that's our fig file at in the uh, nginx conf d directory tutorial linux conf and that's our vhost config oh yeah we'll enable the um, the default site listening on port 80 or being served by default on port 80. now we're going to create the php php fpm pool config uh, which is sort of the other the other half of this application so your site name becomes is there any other? No. Tutorial Linux. Tutorial Linux. Your username becomes also Tutorial Linux. That's the user. And that should be good. User and group. So this is Nginx's group. This is the user that the PHP FPM process is running as. FPM pool D. Yeah, that's right. And we're creating a Tutorial Linux. Dot, is it a conf? Conf. It is a dot conf. Pasting our edited file here, making sure that there's no more occurrences of your username or your site name or whatever. We're gonna write that baby, and we are. Oh, that's right. We're gonna create the the log file. Home tutorial Linux. The error log. Now we're doing this all as root, so. Uh, we definitely need to, um, I think we do that later, change permissions on all this stuff, but uh, we're gonna log in, password. We're gonna log into MySQL with our root database password and account. And first we're gonna run this again, we're just gonna create another password. This will be the site user's password. Oh, that's weird. Oh, it says you shall think. Um, log out here for a sec okay that's what we want so I've just generated the users password for the site and make a new thing user root I don't even know why I still have this open login as root and then we'll create the database for this user and we'll just call it tutorial Linux select all the occurrences there change them to your site name, whatever you're using, and the choose a password is gonna get replaced by this user password, which we just created. We paste that all in, you can see query okay, 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 no errors, uh, none. Okay, so uh, we're done with MySQL, and now we actually just install WordPress. Uh, before I do this, I'm just gonna there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff in here that I just created as root, so I'm just going to make sure ownership is right. And that'll become not Ubuntu, but Tutorial Linux. Okay, so now I'm logged in as the site user on this machine. And I'm going to just grab WordPress. And that was incredibly fast. I'm definitely not the only one who's done that. It's definitely cached at DigitalOcean. That's funny. We're going to unarchive and zip that, or I should say gzip that and clean up and move WordPress to our public HTML directory. So we're just changing the unzipped you know, WordPress directory to be called public HTML because that's where our site is gonna live. Now I'm entering that public HTML uh, directory and I'm setting ownership of this directory to the user and nginx so that nginx can read all of these files and then i'm gonna just make sure that i have correct permissions on all files and directories inside of my current directory so this is going to go through and make sure that files have 0644 and that directories have 755 set on them okay so we're going to restart our services now and that should 
have nginx and php fpm see all of our new configs okay i'm going to open a new tab here in my shell so this is on my local machine here so on my local like vm that i'm using and i'm going to sudo vim etsy hosts and what this will do is i'm going to hook up this site i'm going to sort of fake a domain name right so what i'm going to say is this server uh, or I should say this host with this public IP is going to be tutoriallinux.com. That's just what it'll be for me. Uh, and I'll also say dub dub dub. Whoops. Dub dub dub. So I'll just have a listing for both dub 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 and the naked tutoriallinux.com. And what I'm doing here is basically bypassing the domain name system. If you want your site to be visible to the outside, obviously you need to set up DNS for it, which I explain uh, in a video during this course. But to fake this quickly, which I also explained during the course, you can configure your local machine to be like, oh, if anyone types in tutoriallinux.com anywhere on this machine, instead of looking up that host name through DNS and turning it into an IP that way, I'm just gonna store the IP manually, statically here in ETC hosts and um, bypass DNS that way. So I've updated my host file as well. And when we go to tutoriallinuxexample.org, I am automatically redirected to WP admin setup config, and I can continue with the configuration. So our database name and username are what we configured earlier, and our password is that user password that we configured. Uh, so that's the database, the user, and our user password here, that first one. Table prefix isn't important. We're going to use separate tables for each site. Run the installer, and so this will be the site admin pass. Probably want to keep a text file like this. Tutorial Linux will be our user. David tutorialinux.com. We're definitely discouraging search engines from indexing. Uh, obviously, if you have a public site, not just for testing, you would want to leave that unchecked. And I think this should be our password. Okay, and we're in. We've got a working WordPress website ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed that kind of basic walkthrough. I hope that gives you some idea. And you can now delve in uh, into the course kind of in, in detail, learn everything, why we're doing everything, what everything is, how they work together, these things, uh, and so on. So I hope that's useful. I hope that's a useful up-to-date view of what this looks like and just that it shows that nothing's really changed in the course. There's a few version numbers, a few directories, uh, and like path locations. Uh, mostly around PHP FPM, but everything else is the same and the instructions are up to date. So uh, enjoy the rest of the course and uh, I'll see you in there. If you've got any questions or issues, you know, obviously look at the documentation first, check the QA, the course QA to see if someone's asked that question before. If you've still got any issues, just ask me and I'll respond. Have fun.